the part two for engineering drawing one or draw one is all about the elements of an engineering drawing. So let's dig deep further into the parts or the contents of an engineering drawing. So we have actually two elements of drawing. The first one is what we know as the graphics language. So the graphics language mainly describes the shape. So sa madaling salita, yung graphic language, yun yung lahat ng drawings na nakalagay sa isang engineering drawing. All the illustrations, all the objects drawn, all the projections are part of the graphics language. For example, in this one, yung drawing ng buildings, this is the graphics language. All the lights also are part of the graphics language. Whereas, the second element of an engineering drawing is known as the word language. So the word language describes size, location, and specification of the object. So, Lahat po ng dimensions, lahat ng text, lahat ng letterings that can be found in an engineering drawing is part of the word language. So that is the difference between a graphics language and the word language. So for example, in this engineering drawing, all the elements that are colored, like this blue, oblong, or eclipse, and then this figure, even the hidden lines, the circles, these are the graphics. Whereas the ones in black, all, or, all of the texts that can be found in this engineering drawing are parts of the word language. So all the letterings, the numbers, the radius, all the dimensions that are specified in an engineering drawing is part of the word language. So, in an engineering drawing, again, we are dividing it into two elements, the graphics language and the word language. And then, in the word language, you can further uh, identify it as lettering. So, we already tackled lettering in the past lesson in part one. And then, for graphics language, this is composed of three these are the line types, the projection method, and the geometric construction. So for the line types, we already discussed about them in the past lesson. So in this part, we are going to focus on the projection method and the geometric construction will be on part 3. So projection method. So what can we find in the projection method. So the projection method or the projection theory is based on two elements which are the line of sight and the plane of projection. So these are the elements of a projection and then these two elements can be uh, also divided into perspective and parallel projection and then parallel has all orthographic and oblique and then orthographic has multi and axonometric. So let's go by them one by one. So the projection theory is used to graphically represent 3D objects on 2D media. So for example, if we were going to construct a house, before constructing the whole house, the architect and the engineer will make your floor plans. So that is the 2D media. And then after um, evaluating those 2D uh, plans, we will convert them into 3D. So we will have our own house. So the projection theory is based on two variables, which are the line of sight and the plane of projection. So what is the difference ng line of sight sa plane of projection? So for the line of sight, it is the imaginary ray of light between an observer's eye and an object. So um, sa madaling salita, yung line of sight, ito yung i-extend natin yung edges ng isang object papunta sa'yo, towards you. So there are two types of line of sights, parallel and converge. So, anong difference ng parallel and converge or perspective projection and the line of sight? So, kapag sinabi natin parallel projection, it, it means the lines are never going to meet. So, hindi sila magtatakbo. Hindi sila pinagtatakbo. Hindi din sila dinagtatakbo. Okay? So, hindi sila magmimit. So, you just extend them in a 90 degree angle, kaya nga parallel, straight lines lang towards you, towards the observer. Whereas, when we say perspective projection, yung line of sight na, 
dahil converge nga yan, it meets in one area. Okay, meron siyang isang area kung saan lahat sila mag-meet tapos i-extend nyo lahat ng edges ng 3D object papunta dun sa converge point nila kung saan sila mag-meet. And then, what is the difference between line of sight and plane of projection? So, the plane of projection is the imaginary flat plane which the image is created. The image is produced by connecting the points where the LOS pierces the projection plane. So, sa madaling salita, after projecting the line of sight, kapag na-project na natin yung line of sight, yung mga projections na yun, pag pinagdugtong-dugtong natin, mabubuo natin yung tinatawag na plane of projection. So, pag pinagdugtong-dugtong yung mga LOS, dun natin makukuha yung plane of projection. So, sa plane of projection, we also have the parallel projection and the perspective projection kasi galing sa line of sight. So, sa plane of projection, the difference between parallel and perspective is that pag parallel, we can get the exact size and shape of the object that we are projecting. So, kung titignan nyo dito, if we analyze nyo, yung isang face ng um, object na to is yun yung pinroject natin. Nakuha natin siya exactly the same. Whereas, the difference in the perspective projection is a disadvantage kasi it's more difficult to create and it does not reveal exact size and shape. So, if you will look here, dahil nag-converge sila in one point, lumiliit yung area na pwede nating idugtong-dugtong yung point. So, kapag din gumawa kayo ng perspective projection from the plane of projection dito, hahanapin nyo pa yung point kung saan sila magdudugtong-dugtong exactly. Doon pa lang yung plane of projection. And mas maliit siya compared sa original nating face. So, yun yung disadvantage ng perspective projection. Kaya mas madalas ang ginagamit sa mga engineering drawings ay ang parallel projection for line of sight and plane of projection. So, under parallel projections, ito nga yung mas ginagamit natin kasi it uh, gives us the exact size and shape. We have two kinds of parallel projections. We have orthographic and oblique. So, let's go first to oblique kasi ito yung masyadong hindi ginagamit. So, hindi siya common when it comes to engineering drawing. So, the oblique projection, yung tatandaan nyo na lang dito, is that the projectors intersect at an oblique angle to produce the up-projected image. So, meron tayong angle kapag pinoproject natin yung isang drawing. Unlike as opposed to orthographic, perpendicular lang, which means... 90 degree angle pagdating sa orthographic. So, pag oblique angle, it's an oblique projection. Of course, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. Basta hindi siya parallel or hindi siya perpendicular, it's an oblique projection. So, orthographic projection, ito na yung ginagamit natin commonly sa lahat ng engineering drawings, even in the aviation industry. So, we ginagamit natin yan. Orthographic projection, orthographic drawing. So, the orthographic projection is a parallel projection technique in which the parallel lines of sight are perpendicular to the projection plane. So, if I recall natin in the past uh, topic about line of sight and plane of projection, yung orthographic projection exactly copies the uh, plane of projection in a parallel perspective, which means we can get the exact size and exact shape of an object's face. Okay? So, for example, this 3D drawing. So, kung kukunin daw natin tong face na to, si project natin siya. This is the orthographic drawing kasi ito lang yung left side view na. Ah, sorry. Front view to pala. This is a front view. So, pag kinuha natin yung front view niya, this is the exact size and shape of the front view of this drawing. So, kung titignan naman natin siya from the top view, from the top view, ito yung makikita nyo um, projection. It is also the exact size and shape of the 3D drawing. So, 
Let's go further into orthographic drawing. So, we have two kinds of orthographic drawing. We have multi-view and axonometric. So, the difference between these two is that sa multi-view, these are two-dimensional drawings. So, lahat ng faces nasa multi-view yan. Top view, front view, right side view, back view, lahat ng views is in a multi-view. While the axonometric usually is a 3D drawing. So, actually, sa axonometric, um, usually, ang ginagamit natin dito is what we call the isometric drawing. So, usually, yung axonometric, yung kinukuha natin, yung isometric drawing. Ito yung drawing na three-dimensional nga. So, may imagine nyo na ano yung itsura talaga na binubuo nating material. So, let's uh, further differentiate axonometric with multi-view. So, axonometric drawing, the advantage is that it is easy to understand. So, ito kasi yung is, is, isang example ng axonometric drawing. Mga three dimensions na siya. So, we have depth. So, meron na siyang lalim. So, we have length, width, and the height. And then, alam nyo kagad kung ano yung itsura ng binubuo yung part. So, L-shape siya na mayroong butas dito sa top side. Whereas, the disadvantage is that meron tayong shape and angle distortion kasi it is in an isometric view. So, meron ka angle sa usually ng 45 degrees or 120 degrees. So, nagiging objects angle yung right angle. Tapos yung mga bilog, nagiging eclipse. Pero if you will look at it, na nandito ka, this is the observer. Ito yung front view nyo. Ito yung front view nyo. And this is the right side view and this is the top view. So, ganyan yung pagkakatingin natin sa isang axonometric drawing. We have three types of axonometric drawings. So, we have isometric, dimetric, and trimetric. Usually, guys, yung ginagamit lang talaga is the isometric drawing kasi equal yung angles and a access natin sa three sides. Unlike dito, syempre, mas mahirap i-identify yung exact size and shape ng isang material kapag hindi pantay-pantay yung pagkakaproject natin ng sides na. Okay? So, kung nga yung top view, mas malaki yung angle sa front view, syempre, ipag-iiba yung magiging itsura niya. Kaya, usually, ginagamit lang talaga is the isometric. And then, the difference, again, for multi-view, this is the 2D drawing. So, ito yung example ng multi-view drawing. The advantage is that it represents size, accurate size and shape. So, kung ano yung pagkakadrawing dito, kung ano yung shape dito, itong ito yung nandoon sa object. But, the disadvantage is that it requires practice in writing and reading. So, Titignan nyo, if ito lang yung binigay sa inyong views, multi-view drawing, may imagine nyo ba siya na ito siya in 3D? ba? So, ito. Ito siya in 3D, pero kapag binigay siya ng multi-view sa inyo, ito lang yung makikita nyo. So, if hindi kayo expert in interpreting a multi-view drawing, hindi nyo may imagine na ganun yung itsura nyo pala in actual. That's why, ang ginagawa natin sa engineering drawing is that pinagsasama yung multi-view drawing and yung axonometric drawing para hindi na kailangan masyadong mag-isip nung nag-interpret nung engineering drawing kung ano yung magiging itsura niya plus included niya rin yung accurate size and shape nung bawat face nung object na yun. Kaya minimix yung multi-view and yung axonometric drawing. So, um, we are going to use the glass box approach to identify. Ito kasi pwede tayong mag-convert from multi-view papuntang axonometric or vice versa. From axonometric papuntang multi-view. So, ang ginagamit usually is the glass box approach. So, imagine ninyo daw na sa loob ng box yung object Tapos, ipro-project natin siya forward para sa front view, right side para sa right side view, and then yung sa taas for the top view. So, we'll be discussing this one. This is already the geometric kasi. So, sa part 3 na to. But I would just like to uh, show you the six orthographic views. So, we have six orthographic views. We have the top view, front view, bottom view, right side view, left side view, rear view. Usually, in a very detailed plan, nandito lahat to. Kasi mas madaling ma 
identify yung um natagbi to may identify yung buong drawing kapag nandito lahat ng uh, views niya syempre kung nga if may butas pala sa rear view na hindi natin nakikita from the top view or from the front view syempre doon makikita natin siya so important lahat ng six orthographic views to specify kung ano yung mga bagay-bagay na nandiyan baka iba pala yung material in the rear view compared sa front view yung mga ganun. But, in common engineering drawings, three primary views lang naman yung needed. We, have, we all need the top view, the front view, and the right side view para makakonstruct ng isang uh, axonometric drawing. So, usually sa isang engineering drawing, ganito siya lilitaw. This is the axonometric drawing or the isometric drawing projected into top view, front view, and right side view. Yan palang okay na kapag trained na kayo sa drawing. Yan pa lang yung makikita nyo. Alam nyo na siyang blue end. Tapos, since nandiyan yung accurate size and shape ng mga parts, mas madali na siyang blue end. So, this is very useful when it comes to manufacturing processes. Kasi mas napapadali yung mga uh, production ng mga materials. So, that is actually the end of the part 2 of engineering drawing 1. Projection exercises and geometric will be discussed in part 3. I'll see you in the next vlog. Please subscribe. Click that notification button. Char. Thanks for listening.